Hello and welcome to Terrigal, England's base for this World Cup, which they moved into on Sunday night. Uh, I'm joined by Emma Sanders from the BBC. Thank you very much. We've just had a look around the training base. What were your thoughts of it? Yeah, I thought it was really good. There was plenty there for the players to get involved in. We saw games rooms, we saw um, relaxation rooms. There was obviously the press room, the analysis rooms. Lots of different things for the players to get involved in. Things like darts, table football. Uh, one of the, the, my favourite things was the personalised coffee maker. Um, so it sort of scanned a picture of yourself and then came out on the top of the coffee. So yeah, plenty there for the players to get involved in. And yeah, it looks a lot like the base that they had at the Euros, doesn't it, Sam? Yeah, I mean, the level of detail and there's no stone unturned. I mean, the, the coffee place was absolutely brilliant. You know, the guys there said they'd gone through 40 coffees today and it's midday, but, you know, they brought over chefs. They had books there, VR headsets, anything the players could want to do was there. But also, what about the town itself, Terrigal? Because we've been mainly in Sydney and Brisbane and the big cities, but what's this like compared to, to you know, the main places? Yeah, well, like you say, we spent a lot of time in the city, so it's been quite nice actually getting along to the sunshine. As you can see in the background, obviously it's a lovely day today, so we've seen a couple of the players just walking along the beach. Um, so yeah, just the fact that that's on their doorstep, I think it's been really good for them. Uh, the town is a bit quieter. There's a few bars, there's uh, a few sort of eating areas, a lot of seafood places, but yeah, definitely a bit quieter than what, than what we've been used to kind of in Brisbane and Sydney. So I'd imagine the players have been trying to enjoy the sunshine, beach walks a lot more, haven't they? And Kay Cossington from the FA who's been there 18 years, 20 years, I think it is almost. She was giving us the tour today. She was saying to us it's night and day from when she was, you know, first working the organisation. Mm -hmm. What do you think in terms of a broader sense this says about the women's game, but also from the perspective, you know, of other teams at this tournament, there's not going to be many who've got this level of level of financial support, is there? Yeah, well, even when they were going through the plans about the base camp, it went back to sort of December 2021, January 2022, that they had the first meetings with FIFA. So we know that obviously this has been kind of, you know, two years in the making, really. Um, even just walking around, you can see the amount of investment that the FA have been putting in that they weren't doing 18 years ago when Kay first joined the FA and that was at the home Euros. So yeah, it's come a long way since then. And as you say, it was their number one pick, their number one priority. But I've been to the, the France training ground, um, the Republic of Ireland training ground, and it isn't the same as, as the England one today. So I think certainly that, that shows the difference. And obviously the Euro success, I'd imagine, would have, would have helped that massively.